Hello booktube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm. How are you? Are you well? Are you having a good day? I am here with a quick am reading on what I have been reading recently because I've read a few books and there's one DNF and I thought I'd just quickly update you as to what I've been reading. Um, I've just recorded two other videos and I have yet to watch them back so I'm, and I'm a bit nervous about them. One of them is about true crime reads that I have recently got into and the other is about how I rate books. And I've got to watch them back and I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm going to release it. Not because it's, there's anything controversial in it, I think. I just, I don't know. It's a discussion video. I'm not great on those. I'm much better if I'm just telling you about what I've read recently. So I have read Visions of Heat, which is book two, yes, in the Psy to Changeling, Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh so it's a paranormal romance um between a, a somebody who's a psi and somebody who's a changeling and so if you like your paranormal romance and you like a bit of a bit of a rude stuff a bit steamy then this is the book for you so I, I enjoyed this one I'm not enjoying these as much as the um angel series um but I am enjoying them and they and they're kind of quick romance reads when, when I want a quick romance hit then I enjoy that so I read that um I tried to read the one by John Mars yeah no it has too many it's it's um multi points of view and it has too many narration too many people and they're too quick I don't like short chapters with different people each chapter so I mean it's a page and a half not even a page and a half um maybe two pages maybe three pages per person um the characters were not likable I couldn't relate to them it was too quick and it was irritating me so I got 50 pages and the last thing I want is a thriller that's going to irritate me. So whilst other people may really enjoy this, the one, Have You Met Your Match, is not for me. I shall be getting rid of that book. It will be going. Somebody else will, will love it. Um, a book I have really enjoyed on audio is Sense and Sensibility. This is my beautiful Penguin Cloth Bound edition. Um, but I was listening to it on audio. It was narrated by Juliet Stevenson. I, A, adore her. B, adore the book. And C just had a glorious experience. Marianne will always, I will always find her troubling. I mean, I just, I, I really will. And at times I was a bit like, Rah! but there is redemption. There is redemption. Um, and then Eleanor, oh, I just, I mean, she's just, she's in my heart always. So Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. If you are interested in, in classics and you enjoy, oh, it's such a gentle romance, but it's just, it's a wonderful period book and, and it just captivates me each time. And I do recommend uh, Juliet Stevenson as the narrator because I listened to that with a persuasion as well. And, uh, oh, she's so good. Um, I picked up, this was a book that I was going to read in Booktubeathon and I didn't read. And so I picked it up because I, I, I really fancied it. The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. So this was the winner of the Wainwright Prize last year, which is about travel writing, um, more than travel writing there's kind of emotional connections to travel this is Amy Littrop found herself back in um, the Orkney Isles where she grew up this is where she's from and um, she never felt like she she was kind of part of that because her parents were English and although she was born and brought up there she never felt kind of part of the island she wanted to leave for as long as she could remember so she did leave as soon as she could and um, found herself at the age of 30 with a severe alcohol uh, problem and back on Orkney um, trying to stop drinking and, and, and this is how she stops or how she how the islands did she ever leave them even when she was in London and it's and it's and her experience it's wonderful in terms of um it's very lyrical about the Orkney Isles and what she does when she's there um and the surroundings and the landscape and how much it is part of her when she didn't even realize um and it's also about alcoholism I found it 
and, and I don't think this is an uncommon experience with this book, she is utterly self-absorbed. Now, I know it's a memoir, and people tend to be absorbed, self-absorbed in memoirs because it tends to be about them. But she, you have no idea what anybody else is like. You have no idea what she talks about her mother and her father and her brother and her friends and her boyfriend, her, her ex-boyfriend, and yet they are paper thin. And I know about her and her obsessions and her obsessions to the extreme and I know about the island but I know about nobody else and because of that it felt overwrought a lot of it I also felt like I knew her that there are people in my life that I have had that experience with and so that was an interesting experience for me to have been reading to kind of think yes you're reminding me of x y and z at this point and and I found them irritating when they were doing that or talking like that or searching for heightened experience all the time to the point where they negate sitting feeling happy so it's an interesting so it's an interesting experience I found it irritating but at the same time inspiring and I'm really glad I've read it um, I'm not sure I'd read any more by Amy Liptrop I really wouldn't so but that was it that was a, that was a good one I'm really glad I read it that was one of my pound buys so that was a, a glorious one um I recently mentioned this in a haul and I said I was going to read it next and I did I, I read The Anchoress by Robin Cadwallader which is about Sarah is only 17 when she chooses to become an anchoress a holy woman shut away in a small cell at the side of the village church this is set in England in 1255 and I went into this not knowing an awful lot about it and I would recommend it doing that I would recommend this book highly I thought it was wonderful utterly wonderful I because somebody being like it's basically a living death and I was I was like, how can there be a, a story about this? How can, how can we... Is it not just going to be 300 pages of internal musings? And, and that sounds not that great. But there is this... Even in that, she's got people that... She's got her confessor. She's got the, her her people that look after her. The, the two ladies that give her, give her the food and her confessor. And she's got a patron and she's got people in the village. And she's there. They use her to pray for... for crops and and for people being poorly and she is a valued member of the community and the book just rings with that um it's quite a fascinating tale it is set over a year to 18 months and i just it, uh, utterly captivated the only bit i had where i went Wah! and i will have to mention this is there is some foreshadowing in this and I loathe foreshadowing with a passion. It is a very, very, very hard technique to do well because you are taking some of the suspense away and you are taking... So you have to be so sparing with, with without just, just taking away any tension. And I felt that Robin, that the author was concerned that, that, that you would think there wasn't enough plot. And so it was kind of saying, well, look, things do happen. And she didn't need to. She really didn't need to. The book was, by, you know, when she's still doing foresh foreshadowing when you're 100 pages in, well, if I'm reading, if I've got up to 100 pages, I'm probably going to finish the book. So don't worry about it. Just let me discover what's going to happen. Be so confident with your writing and with your story and with your characters, which were just brilliantly written. You didn't need to do that. So that kept pulling me out of the story. But once that stopped, I mean, I just, I, I found it fascinating and wonderful and well written. And and apart from that little thing, I just, I loved it. So I'd really recommend that. The Anchor is by Robin Cadwalder. If you can find a copy and read it, I just, oh, it was great. It was great. And the other book that I have just finished... I couldn't wait to read it because I had so many people say, oh, I really like it. It's book one in the Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. It's a Clockwork Angel. So this is a three book series. It's Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. And uh, this is the book one uh, set in Victorian London. It's paranormal fantasy. And also oh, somebody coming in now. Um, it's great. I really enjoyed it. I mean, Cassandra Clare is, is never going to be one of my favourite authors, but, sorry, there's my boys just coming. Hello, sweetie. You're right. 
yeah. I was just going to finish this bit and then I'll be right there. Um, sorry. Um, where was I? Yes, I enjoyed it. I finished it this morning. I'm I'm going to start book two because it's one of those series that I just think I need to just read the three books and enjoy them. Enjoy them for what they are. They're silly. There's a love triangle. Um... I wouldn't say it's gloriously written. However, I didn't go into it expecting it to be glorious written. I love the setting. I love the characters. I love all the shadow hunters and the demons and the vampires. And that's all grand for me. So there we go. So I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to continuing it. I can completely understand why anybody would love this series. Or I can completely understand if people went, ooh, it's not for me. But I'm enjoying it at the moment. So there we go. So it's quite a mixed bag of books that I have either loved or not finished, but mainly on the side of really enjoyed. And uh, there we go. That's my selection. So there we go, BookTube. I'm going to love you and leave you now because my, my boy's just come in and I want to go and see him. All right then, BookTube. Lovely to see you. Let's do this again. Bye.